Live from Lane Gymnasium, Lane Sack Boys Basketball is on the air. We kick off another week, the second week of the regular season, as Lane Sack looks to get above 500 on the year for the first time this season. But in their way, a Bulls College prep team that had a very, very hard conference uh, tournament to start off the year, and they will look to get win number two on the season here on this Wednesday night from Lane Gymnasium. Thanks so much for joining us. My name's Alex Burstein. Above the court here at Lane Tech, we are in for what should be a fun one. Bulls College Prep was very young last year. They played against Lane. Lane got a pretty handy win against them, but they return a lot of talent. They have some new names as well. And this is a Bulls Prep team that is in big contention for a Noble League title in a couple of months. But first, they're looking to get a statement win against Lane Tech here tonight. As for Lane Tech, they had an up and down first week of the season. Two and two entering tonight's contest, but they have some impressive stars, some impressive young stars who hope to continue to make an impact here on the second week of the IHSA regular season. We have just over five minutes to go, and still first tip here at Lane Tech, and we will take you down to the court right now to take a look at both the teams warming up. It'll be Bulls College Prep in their red uniforms tonight. Right now they're wearing their black warm-ups, and Lane Tech will be in their white uniforms. Some of the players still in their green warm-ups, but that is what you can look for in the jerseys tonight for both these squads. We do have our starters, so we will take you through those right now, starting off with the Visiting Bulls College Prep Bulls. It'll be one of the leaders of this team, starting at guard number one, Dennis Naylor, a 5'10 senior. Doesn't have that much height, but he is very impressive, averaging just over 12 points a game so far this season. He did not play much last year, but head coach Jacob Goldstein said he has made great strides since the start of last season, really came to life at the end of last year and has been the star for this squad through the first four games of the season. Number three, Cameron Pointer, another guard, was first team all Noble League last year. He was one of the stars as just a junior. Now as a six foot senior, he has taken on a senior leader role, has been doing a lot of stuff, a couple of different statistical categories throughout the start the year pointer gets these starts. Then comes the young, kind of unexpected star, number five, Jalen James. He had a couple of big games last year, but he really woke up last week. 14 points against St. Vegas, 11 points against Lake Forest. Those are two ranked opponents that uh, Bulls College Prep had to play against, and then he follows it up with an 18-point performance against Rauner to close out the week. He was named All-Tournament. Jalen James, a player to watch. Head coach Jacob Goldstein said, He's a very special young player and is just a junior. He's made a big impact on this team and will be and will be oh, a big part of this team here tonight. Apologies, folks. Our audio was a little rough trying to fix that right now. But So it's going to be those three starting. Then the final two starters tonight, number 11, Tyshawn Oliver, by far the tallest player on this team. He comes in at 6'7", very big for the high school game, and the forward has been averaging 5.8 points, but more importantly, 5.3 rebounds a game for this team this year. He's been super impressive, and will get the start here tonight for Bulls College Prep. And finally, number 22, Aaron Rodson, another returning player. He had some big games, scored 22 in the matchup last year. He knows how to score, and the 5'11 junior guard will be the final starter on this night, something we should mentioned we are expecting to see number two Curtis Owens possibly play for the first time this season he was one of the leaders of this team last year was in double digits a bunch of different games was uh, scored 23 in the matchup against Niles West last year he has not played in a game yet this year so it'll be interesting to see if and when Curtis Owens hits the court here tonight what damage the 5'9 senior guard can do against this lane sack squad so those are going to be our five to start off tonight for Bolt Scholar prep now we will take you through the five this evening for lane sack it is going to be a pretty similar lineup as you fans are used to however one big change for lane sack we'll get to that in a second it'll be number 10 jack soar one of the guards starting tonight the 6'3 senior struggled a little bit scoring wise but always a good defensive and passing force for this lane sack team we'll see what he can do here tonight as lane kicks off the second week of ihsa uh, regular season action Lorenzo Aquino, the kind of breakout star of week one. We are expecting big things out of him 
this year, just looking at his summer tape and whatnot, and he showed it on Friday. A career-high 21 points against Parker to lead Lane Tech to a blowout victory. He had five three-pointers in that game. A very impressive star in Lorenzo Aquino. We will see how he follows up that impressive game for uh, workload here tonight in game number five of the season. Parker Williams, number 23, the junior forward slash guard. He's been very impressive. He gets the start for Lane Tech coming off a 13-point performance. Dalton Scantlebury, the sophomore power forward who's been playing in the five role pretty much all season for Lane Tech, gets the start. And finally, the one switch tonight for Lane Tech, it'll be number 24 Jackson Labcon game to start the 6'2 junior point guard slash shooting guard. He is starting in place of Shahid Solibo, who we do expect to see tonight, but is not going to be starting tonight for the champions. And that will be your five to start off play tonight here on this Wednesday afternoon, excuse me, this Wednesday evening from Lane Sack as both the teams are going to head to their bench and we will have the national anthem in just a second so we will switch to that when we get to it and then we'll be back with uh, actual gameplay here from Lane Sack but as we wait for that, we will recap the first week of the season for these two teams. It was a one and three start for Bulls College Prep, but as we said, they had some very tough opponents. Started off the season to losses to St. Ignatius, Lake Forest, Taft, but then finally able to get a win against Rauner. Lane Tech, meanwhile, two and two wins against Legal Prep and Parker. Losses to Jones and Niles North to finish fifth in the Battle of Bridge Thanksgiving Tournament as we turn to the national anthem here at Lane Tech. It. Nice national anthem playing as always from the Lane Sack uh, pet band. And just like that, we are ready for some action here at Lane Sack. They're going to run through the starting lineups on the PA announcer system. And then we'll be ready for first tip here at Lane Sack. Fans still filing in to the crowd here. Not a super packed house, but a nice student section for Lane Sack. You can see that on the left side of your screen. Jersey night here at Lane Gymnasium. So a lot of play, play uh, fans and cheerleaders and dance team members wearing their jerseys uh, jerseys they have for tonight's matchup but on the court a very exciting matchup between two young teams Lane Sack who had I think eight players make their varsity debuts last week and uh, Bulls College Prep who was very young last year they still have some juniors but they return a lot of experience and they have been using that to their advantage all year long head coach Jacob Goldstein said it really gave them the opportunity to bypass a lot of the stuff they usually have to do at the start of the season learning offensive schemes learning defensive schemes and they've just been able to work and hammer stuff out these last couple of weeks because they've not had to focus on that stuff that they usually do so that's an advantage for the Bulls College prep team and we will see how that comes to play here tonight as the starting lineups get announced here on the court once again for Bulls College
college prep tonight. It'll be Naylor, Pointer, James, Oliver, and Watson, the five on the court. They are coached by head coach Jacob Goldstein in his eighth season as the head coach of this Bulls college prep squad. As for Lane Sack, it'll be Jack Soar, Lorenzo Aquino, Parker Williams, Jackson Labcon, and Dalton Scantlebury making the starting five for Lane Sack. Labcon's first start here as a member of this Lane Sack varsity squad. Lane coached by head coach Nick Legalbo here on this Wednesday night as we get ready for a tip-off here at Lane Zach. Both the teams taking one last second in the huddle. Bulls College Prep will break their huddle first. They are in their red uniforms for tonight's game. They'll be going from right to left across your screen. Lane Zach in their all-white home uniforms. They will be going from left to right. This is the fifth game for the season for Lane Zach. However, they have been playing every single game at Lane. They had all four of their tournament games here at Lane Sack. They have a home game here tonight, obviously. They will finally take the road on Friday to take on Taft in the Chicago Elite Classic. We'll have more on that later, but as we are saying, just a lot of home games for Lane Sack to start off this 2022-23 season. It'll be Dalton Scantlebury and Tyshawn Oliver, year two in the starter, a 6'7 forward for the Bulls and a 6'6 forward for the Lane Sack champions. This actually might be the first time this season Scantlebury's come into the circle as the shorter player. And we will see who wins the tip. It is the Bulls, however, they're going to whistle it dead. And it looks like we will have a redo here. So we'll have two tip-offs to start off the game here at least from Lane Gymnasium. Second try at it. Scantlebury wins and we're underway here from Lane Zach. Lorenzo Aquino, the leading scorer from Lane's game against Parker on Friday, takes things up the court here for the champions. Some nice early defense from Bulls College Prep. Expecting them to come out in a man-to-man -man here. That's the type of defense they like to play, at least early on in games, as Labcon almost loses his dribble but gives it off to Parker Williams. Williams has started a couple of games this season with a score. He's been a very impressive junior as Scantlebury misses the three there. But good to see Lane Sack having their big man get some shots up early. He's had, that's kind of a secret weapon here early on. Lane thought they could catch Bulls College Prep off guard with that. They kind of did. He wasn't being guarded, however. The shot does not fall. And we will stick at 0-0, 45 seconds into this one. Oliver drives right-hand side, misses the shot. Foul's going to be called. Going up for the rebound there was Aaron Watson. I believe he was the one fouled, and they're going to call it against Parker Williams. This was one of the struggles on Friday for Lane Tech and Parker. Both the teams were fouling a lot. Lane Tech would really like to see these fouls come down as we get into this part of the season, past that first week, past the time where there's a lot of airs trying to clean up the game, and starting with that is going to be limiting the fouls for this squad as James gets it to the outside here from Watson. Watson, a junior, but was a big force on this team last year. He throws this one out of bounds, though, so Lane will get possession back. Just doing research for this game, a lot of names were very familiar for me. I mean, Lane played Bulls College Prep very early on last season, and even at that point, the first, second, third week of the season, Bulls Prep were playing a lot of these young stars, and now they're just very more experienced this season as Aquino loses the ball, scooping it out will be Naylor. He loses it. Now Scantlebury gets the scoop and score for the first time. Lane Sack will take the lead here on this Wednesday night. Two nothing, six and a half minutes to play in quarter number one. So it takes Lane Tech about two and a half possessions, but they are able to find the net here against Bulls College Prep as Watson almost loses it underneath the basket, throws it out to his teammate James. That will go out of bounds and Lane Tech will get possession back. One of the big things that head coach uh, Jacob Goldstein said about this Bulls College prep team, their defense is going to be very important today, closing out the outside shots as Jack Soar takes a three and drains it. That's exactly what he wanted his team not to give off, closing out the outside shooters that Lane Tech has, but Jack Soar splashes an open three and Lane will go up 5 nothing early as we see another foul called here against Lane Tech. That should be called against Scantlebury and that will be the second of the half called here against Lane Tech. So just over two minutes in and Lane Tech already with two fouls called against them. 
Bulls College Prep would love to get into the bonus early against a team here like Lane Sack. This one, a long ball out to Watson, who seems to be controlling the pace of the game here early on for the Bulls. Now they give it in the corner, three on its way from Oliver, who swishes it. Tallest player on the court splashes a three to get the Bulls within two. And we have a competitive game here early on from Lane Gymnasium. 5-3, five, five and a half to play, quarter number one of action. Labcon driving left-hand side, trying to get to the basket. A foul's going to be called. Oliver took a hard foul to the ground there. Hopefully he's okay. All four of his teammates are coming over to try to pick him up. He looks like he will be fine. However, we will see our first sub into the game soon for the Bulls, and that will be in the form of number 15, Melvin Dower, who comes in for Oliver. Dower, another one of the impressive players on this first week of the season. He's really been finding his shot recently. We'll see if he can score it all tonight as Williams gets the shot off the inbounds play to put Lane Sack back up by four. That's been one of the big things for Lane Tech out of Williams. He has an outside shot. He can also drive in. He's just a multi-school player, and that is very uh, important for Lane Tech to have. As shot missed here by James, but he gets the putback. He has his first two of the nights, and rolls prep pulls within two. The smallest lead has been for Lane Tech here since tip-off. Jack Zor on the far side looking to find an opening. Loses the ball. Some very tight defense there from Cameron Pointer, and they say it goes off of Sir. So Bulls College Prep will get the ball back with a chance to tie it or take a lead for the first time here tonight. Driving right-hand side. They push it out here to Pointer. As he mentioned, he's been somewhat quiet scoring-wise, but he was all Noble League last year, first team. He has some very impressive skill sets and just is a very vocal leader for this squad as Naylor loses his dribble, and he steps out of bounds. Nice defense there from Jackson Labcon. Lane's defense has done a good job here on most of these possessions against Bulls College Prep. Their offense a little slow here per usual out of the starting gates, but their defense has kept them in the lead here through the first three and a half minutes of gameplay. 4.20 left on the clock. Kino brings it up the court, gives it to Scantlebury. They still have Scantlebury playing in the outside of the perimeter as Williams takes a three. Scantlebury grabs his first rebound of the night and gets the putback to go. His second basket of the night, he leads all scorers with four points, and Lane goes up by four here, as we'll see the first subs into the game soon here for Lane Tech. For those of you wondering, we should see Shahid Salibo later in this game. He's not starting as a travel, looks like, is going to be called here against Pointer, who is trying to drive to the basket. The two subs into the game right now for Lane Tech, Braden Rosencrantz and Drew Bartoli, who Head in for Labcon and Jack Soar. A nice play from those two early on, but we'll see two sophomores get some quick minutes here early on. Williams takes the long inbound pass, almost finds an opening. Instead, they give it out to Rosencrantz. And Aquino will pick it up. So you have two true point guards on the court right now for Lane Tack in both Aquino and Rosencrantz. Scantlebury gets it in the corner. Williams for three. It was a wide open shot. Can't get it to fall though. And we will stay at a four point lead here. Three and a half to play quarter number one. Lane Tack looking to get to three wins. This will be the first time they're above 500 on the year as driving left hand side Curtis Owens gets fouled. Talked about this in the pregame. He just checked in for Bulls. This is his first minutes of the year. He's supposed to be setting the pace for the squad this season. He was out the first week of the year, but head coach Jacob Goldstein said he was playing very hard in practice. They were excited to see him finally hit the court, and he has a chance to score his first points of the season here, and not yet. Misses the first free throw. We'll see if he can do it on the second. As Oliver checks into the game for a pointer. Good to see he is okay after that hard foul a couple of seconds ago. They will keep, they will put the 6-7 big man back into the game as Owens makes the second of two and pulls the Bulls within three here. 9-6, just over three to play. Quarter number one of action here from Lane Sack. Thanks for joining us. Alex Bursting on the call here. Bartola gets it to Aquino. Yet to see any points from 
Lorenzo Aquino here tonight so far. He had 21 against Parker as Williams takes another shot. This one he hits. Williams in a very shoot-friendly mood here early on. He's taken most of the shots for the champions, but he does have four points to show for it as on the other side, a quick shot miss. Scansbury will pick up another rebound, a defensive rebound here as Rosencrantz tries to pick up the pace for the champions. Rosencrantz, Scantlebury, Bartoli, Aquino, and Williams. Your five on the court for the champions as Rosencrantz saw a player that wasn't there, throws it out of bounds, and Jack Sorb will check into the game for Aquino. So Lane with some active substitutions here early on. A five-point lead, 11-6 to six over Bulls College Prep. Owens now running the point, gives it back to Dennis Naylor. That's going to be a very good one-two punch at the guard position this year for Bulls College Prep as they look to make a run back to the Noble League Championship game after falling in their first uh, Noble League Championship playoff game last season. This one goes off the hands of Jalen James, heads out of bounds, and... Lane Sack will keep possession underneath their scoring basket. 2.07 to go here, quarter number one of play. Bartoli has been one of the main inbounders when he has been in. A multi-tool player playing as a forward for this Lane Tech squad. And just as we say that, they're going to switch Jack Soar to inbound it instead. We'll see what kind of play Lane Tech tries to open up. Williams is open, they get it to him as the clock ticks to two minutes to go here in quarter number one. Rosencrantz takes his first shot of the night. This one off the mark. Heads off the backboard there and recovered by the Bulls. That will be Naylor bringing it up the court. Jack Sor some nice defense. They send it down low to Oliver. Now driving right-hand side. James looking for his second basket of the night. He makes it look very, very easy. The junior up to uh, four points now here on the night and cuts the lead to three for the champions here with 90 seconds to go in quarter number one. Williams sends another shot. This one rattles around the rim and out. We'll see Pointer check back into the game soon for Bulls College Prep. Nice move here to the basket and finishing is Owens. And just like that is a one point game. That's the difference maker for Bulls right now. Owens, who we mentioned making his season debut here tonight against Lane Sack. He's been very impressive here early on. At three points, made a trip to the free throw line and quickly silencing that run by the Bulls will be Braden Rosencrantz who hits his first shot of the night. And we have a back and forth affair here at Lane Gymnasium. Driving to the basket, Jack Soar strips Naylor of the ball. They will say it goes off of Jack Soar as we see Pointer check into the game for uh, Melvin Dower. It's interesting here. It doesn't seem like Bulls have really any set rotations. They're going in and out with players going in for different people each time. But it's been working here early on. They've kept this at a four-point game here as we near the end of the first quarter. Nice rebound and put back from Pointer. And I think the most important part for Bulls here is they've really diversified their scoring. On their win against Rounder, they had three players in double digits. They've had their big scores this year, but if they can open up more lanes for scoring, that's going to be big for them as Jack Soar misses the three. Scantlebury with the put back and one, though, to put Lane Sack back up by four, and he can bring the lead to five here with an extra point to complete the three-point game. Scantlebury's had a couple of quiet outings. He started the year very strong, but he has not scored double digits since the first game of the season. Scored 15 against Jones, 9 against Legal Prep, but just 4 and 6 against Niles North and Parker respectively. But with the free throw here missed, he is still already at 6 points. And they're going to say a travel there called on the rebound by Bulls College Prep, and Lane Sack will keep possession, so Lane will have a shot to hold for one final shot here. Williams gets it, he's gonna shoot it right away. The fadeaway misses it, almost tipped in there by Bartoli, and Bulls will get it back with 10 seconds. Head coach Agalbo not happy with that play. I think he wanted his team to hold for one final shot. Owens puts up a shot, that one's off the mark. Scantlebury puts it into the hands of Naylor. Now Rosencrantz with it, and he did not see the clock. Lane will not get a final shot off, so kind of sloppy last 
last minute of the play from both of these teams, but Lane Tech will have the four-point lead as we head into quarter number two of action. Don't go anywhere. Lane Tech with a 16-12 lead. You're watching Lane Tech Boys Basketball here on the Lane Tech Athletics YouTube channel. To quarter number two we go. Lane Tech with a 16-12 lead over Bulls College Prep as we enter the second eight minutes of play. Lane does have the lead, but probably not as big as they would have wanted. An impressive start to this game for Bulls College Prep. They have Curtis Owens back. He has three of the points for the uh, Bulls. And then we saw some impressive play from Pointer, Naylor, James. Really a diverse scoring effort out of the Bulls through these first eight minutes to keep this at a doable deficit through the first quarter of play. It will be Bulls basketball to start off this second quarter. Owens inbounding it, and he's able to get it easily to his teammate Dennis Naylor, the other senior guard on the court right now for the Bulls. Now they get it down low to Oliver. Labcon, Bartoli, Rosencrantz, Thor, and Shahid Saliba will be your five on the court as some nice transition basketball and finishing with the reverse layup is Drew Bartoli. Quite the passing effort there from Lane Sack to go up back by six, 18 to 12 here against Bulls to start off the second quarter of play. Owens trying for a response three, line drive shot there, somehow finds its way into the basket and cuts it to a three point lead. And a foul's going to be called against uh, James it looks like there, that's going to be the uh, should be the third team foul against Bulls. So both the teams have kind of evened out in fouls. Lane had two early fouls, but then just had one the final six minutes of the quarter to kind of slow down the pace of this game as Jack Soar is going to get it to Labcon. Salibo in the corner. He's making his debut for the game. And Rosencrantz will get called for a travel trying to get it to Labcon as Dylan Pepper will check in here for Bartoli. Nice couple of minutes of play there for the sophomore. And we will see uh, Pepper make his first appearance of the game. Aquino also checking in for Rosencrantz. So slightly changed lineup here. Just a minute in to this quarter at number two for Lane Sack. Owens gets it to Pointer. It hasn't been a super clean first quarter, and so for Lane Tech, we've still seen some airs that were haunting them through the first four games of the season, some turnovers, some missed shots, but still early in the season. But now that you get past that Thanksgiving window, this is when you really want to see Lane Tech hit their stride as they get a week away from conference play. A great defensive effort there from Jack Soar. I don't think they called a foul, and they are going to say possession goes to Bulls, so it will still be Bulls basketball, but way further down the court since to a, due to a strong push there from Jack Soar. We talked about he did not score that much for Lane Tech last night, last week, but he has been very impressive defensively. This one goes off Salibo's head and will stay with the Bulls. 18-15 Lane with the three-point lead over their opponent here. 6.44 to go, quarter number two of action. They get the inbound to the far side. Owens gets open, fires up a three, and he will miss his second free three-point shot of the quarter. Aquino in the corner, still scoreless. He gets fouled trying to drive the baseline. It's going to be called on James. That will be his second foul of the night. So it is something to watch here. Maybe it's his first. I'm not sure how quickly the scoreboard updated there. But either the first or second foul there for James. Obviously a player that Bulls College Prep cannot afford to have 
on the bench late in a game. As Salibo thinks about the three, instead will back things out and reset the offense here for Lane Tech. Under six and a half to play. Drives right hand, left hand side, but gets blocked there. Nice defensive effort from a couple of Bulls college prep players. Watson gets it to Pointer in transition, and Pointer just throws that one away. It's the second or third chance tonight we have seen from Bulls has kind of just been wasted by throwing it out of bounds. Might just be they're a little behind on their plays or running stuff a little too fast. But because of that, that has taken a few points off the scoreboard. Jack Sorg, the long three off the mark, rebounded here by Bulls. And Naylor will bring things up the court here, trying to cut into this three-point lane tackle lead. Kino with some tight defense here on Owens. Now near side. Thinking about the three there was Pointer, but they're going to put one of Lane's top defenders, Shahid Salibo, on him. And he's doing a great job locking up Pointer here. And they're going to call a foul here against Salibo. Came in there, I think just a little too much momentum, bumped into Pointer there. And that will be foul number four on the half of Lane Tech. So because of that, now Lane is going to find themselves Three fouls away from putting Bulls College Prep in bonus. So still a ways away to do that, but five and a half minutes left to go in the quarter. Still early quarter number two, as we're going to see another foul here from Lane. And this time it will be called against Aquino. So a couple of Lane sack star players gain some fouls. That's going to be the second called against Aquino here as driving to the basket, somehow finishing there was Owens. He's a very fun player to watch, and it's a one-point game here. We're going to see two of Lane Tech starters check back into the game here momentarily. Scantlebury and Williams, as this has suddenly turned into a one-point game, 18 to 17. Five minutes and change to play in quarter number two. Scantlebury serving the, excuse me, eight, uh, Labcon serving the court. He gives it out to uh, Pepper, who puts up a three, but gets his own rebound. Driving right hand side, finishes with the two. Very impressive there from Dylan Pepper. Missed his initial shot, got his own rebound, and falls it up with a layup scored for his first points of the night and puts Lane back up by three. It's been slim margins, but Lane Sack has been able to keep their lead since the first basket scored here tonight. They would love to be able to do that for the remaining 20-plus minutes of the game as an excellent move there. Watson made it look like he was going to pass it to the outside. Instead, does a quick turnaround move, finishes with the score, and it's a one-point game again. Pepper looking for Aquino, gets him. Aquino drives up the middle, finds an opening, but passes it to Jack Zor. He made one of these, but has missed his next two three-point attempts to stay at three points on the night. Three ball on its way. This one binked, but just a little too short there from Naylor. And a foul's going to be called against Bulls College Prep as we see Scantlebury and Williams check into the game alongside Oliver. Pepper and Jack Zor head to the bench for the champions. And we will see Dower head to the bench for Bulls. Looks like Bulls might be heading towards a semi-full court press. Now they're going to back up. They've been doing a half-court defense here all night so far. And they will stick with that, it looks like, for the second half of this quarter number two. Labcon fires his first shot of the night and gets it to go. Jackson Labcon hits three and a 30-second timeout called here by Lane Sack. So... That puts the lead up to four here for the champions. The junior who made his first varsity start for this Lane Tech squad and just his first varsity start overall um, tonight gets his first points. They have not updated the scoreboard yet. I'm guessing that's just an air. Now they will. Looks like they may be counting it as just a two, so his feet might have been on the line. But either way, some nice points there from LabCon to increase Lane Tech's lead here. They've been playing with just a one or two points, two possession lead the whole night. Still 
that at the moment, a three-point lead for the champions. And you have to imagine in this huddle right now, Lane Zach saying they really want to get this to a multi-possession game by halftime. Bulls College Prep has been a very impressive second half team. You take it back to their win against Rauner on Saturday. You look at the final score, 74-57. You might think it was a blowout the whole game. That was not the case. They were only up by four at the half. Then by the third quarter, they extended their lead to over 20 points, I want to say. It was a very impressive third quarter from Bulls. They've shown that they can make halftime adjustments, play in those final 16 minutes very well. So Lane... Definitely wants to go into the halftime break with a lead here, preferably by more than three or four. And now they're going to change it back to a three. So it will be a 23-19 lead for Lane Sack. The long pass goes over the head of Naylor there. And the champions will get possession back. So it's Williams, Aquino, Labcon, Scantlebury, and Shahid Solibo. You're five on the court right now. Four lane sack. The four starters plus Solibo instead of Soar here. Williams surveys for Solibo. Thought about the three there, but Pointer's done a very good job on that defensive assignment here. Solibo decides to pull for three anyways, but hits the back of the rim. And ricochets in to the hands here of Watson back on point guard duties for this Bulls prep team. Goes straight to the free throw line and hits the two. Seems like whenever Bulls needs a shot to kill off some lane sack momentum or just get back into the game, they get it. As we reach the under three minute mark to go here in quarter number two. Williams left hand side goes up for two, misses the shot. Rebounding it is Oliver. And now Watson will push it, trying to tie up this game or take the lead. Pointer goes down the baseline, blocked there by Scantlebury, his first block of the night. But Oliver able to pick up the offensive rebound. This one, however, sent into the backcourt, and that will be a backcourt violation. So Lane Tech gets a lucky break there, as we'll see Trevor Goodhart check into the game for the first time tonight. He comes in for LabCon. Goodhart, one of the three-point shooting threats here. And looks like that backcourt violation, because it was so far down the court, is going to actually be inbounded under Lane Tech scoring basket. So lucky break here from Lane. They get it to Solibo, who drives left-hand side, pushes it out to Goodhart. And now to Williams. Some impressive defense here early on at four bulls. Aquino pulls for the long two, misses it. Scansilbury can't get the put back. And Bulls will have another chance here to tie it or take the lead. For the lead, Owens misses it. Rebounded, though, by James and Scantlebury with his second block of the quarter. Goodhart will get fouled while trying to push it up the court. That will be foul number five against this Bulls College prep team. And it looks like everyone was heading towards the free throw line. It is not the bonus yet for Lane Tech. They are going to be inbounding it near half court. So 2.07 to go here in quarter number two. A two-point lead for the champions over Bulls College Prep. So Lebo still scoreless on the night. He pulls up for three, misses it, rebounded by Williams. He thinks about playing it up himself. Some nice defense there from Oliver. And... Once again, it will be Bulls with the ball down two. They've had three possessions now to try to cut into this two-point deficit without Lane Tech scoring, and they finally do off the hands of number 11, Tyshawn Oliver. It's a tie game here with 90 seconds to go at Lane Gymnasium in the first half. Saliba with the basketball. He loses it, fighting for it, and getting the basketball is James and... Bulls College Prep will try to take the lead here. James to the basket, misses it. A couple of tip-ins, no good, but the putback, no good as well. They will not get a third chance. Oliver's on the ground, but gets up. So Lebo decides to pull for three before the defense can get back, and he does. So it almost turned into disaster there for Lane Sack. Instead puts them up by, looks like two they might have counted it as. So 20, no, now they'll change it to a three as a quick response there from Oliver. And after some back and forth play, both the teams finally find the scoreboard here late in quarter number two, 26-25. Seven here tonight from Oliver. Aquino hits a three. And the two players who really we needed to step up for Lane Sack in the form of Lorenzo Aquino and Shahid Solibo both get some late 
scores here as driving to the basket and getting it will be Dennis Naylor. And a full timeout is going to be called here by head coach Jacob Goldstein for Bulls College Prep. And with that, still just a two point lead here, 29-27. Feels like we're trying to get excited about one play and we have to quickly tone it down because of whoever just scored is failing on defense. The other squad being very quick to respond here. Bulls College Prep doing a really good job kind of keeping Lane Tech from getting any uh, momentum off of their threes here. We just saw big plays from Salibo and Aquino both be quickly turned around by some response baskets. And just like that, 29-27, just a two-point lead once again for Bulls College Prep. They've tied the game here. They've fallen behind by one or two possessions the whole quarter. It's been a close game for Bulls College Prep, but they have still yet to lead in this game. And we'll see if they can somehow overcome that in the last 29.1 seconds of this second quarter of play. This is a surprisingly close game, some would say. I mean, Lane came in as a pretty heavy favorite in this one. Just looking at records and past meetings between these two squads, but a good job by this Bulls College prep team who has a lot of experience to stick with this Lane Sack squad, who you can't really say the same thing about, about uh, experience. Aquino gets it to Scantlebury. 15 seconds left on the clock. Goodhart holds it. Now back to Aquino. Lane holding for one final shot this quarter. Williams motions to the left-hand side. Five seconds. Salibo driving left-hand side. He gets fouled in route to the basket. That will be foul number six. We'll see if they call it a shooting foul or not. And they are going to say it's on the ground. So Lane's going to have 4.9 seconds to get one final shot off here. Aquino searching for someone, gets it to Salibo. Four seconds, he pulls for three and gets it to go. A big three there by Shahid Salibo. Bulls will not get a shot off and it will be a five point halftime lead, 32 to 27. So Salibo after not playing the first quarter hits two big threes there to put the champions up by five, but still a very close game through the first two quarters here at Lane Sack. We're gonna have a couple of performances here from the cheer and dance teams here at Lane Sack. So we will turn our camera to that and be back in a couple of minutes to recap the first half stats and get you ready for the second 16 minutes here at Lane Sack. Your halftime score, Lane Tech champions 32 Bulls College Prep, Bulls 27. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Lane Tech Basketball here on the Lane Tech Athletics YouTube channel.
time here from Lane Tech. The champions with a 32 to 27 lead over the Bulls College Prep Bulls here from Lane Gymnasium as we welcome you above the court here at Lane Tech. A fun 16 minutes, not a lot of defense being played by either of these squads, but some missed shots has kept it a close game to a five point lead for Lane Tech as we enter the second 16 minutes. No big scores for Lane Tech as we recap the first half of scoring. Shahid Salibo with six. He actually leads all scores for Lane Tech to go along with Dalton Scanselbury, who also has six. Three for Jack Soar, three for Lorenzo Aquino, two for Drew Bartoli, four for Parker Williams, and three for Labcon, and two for Pepper will round out the scoring. So as you hear there, a lot of scores for Lane Tech, not a lot of big scores. They've uh, really had no player take the lead in establishing the lead here through the first 16 minutes. We'll see who really steps up for Lane Sack here in the second half of play. For the Bulls, it's been the uh, the senior returning for his first game of the season. Curtis Owens, 10 points from him to go along with a 7 from Tyshawn Oliver to lead this Bulls College Prep squad. To go along with those two, 2 from Cameron Pointer, 2 from Melvin Dower. Four from Aaron Watson and two from Jalen James will be your scores for Bulls College Prep. So two double, uh, one double digit score, excuse me, for this Bulls team. None for Lane Sack. Low scoring first half, but a five point lead for Lane. We will see who can really take control of this game as we head into the second half. And we will take it down to the court now, just under three minutes to go until we get set with second half action here from Lane Gymnasium. It's a somewhat busy night across the conference here for Lane Tech. We'll take you around the Chicago Public Red Northwest or traveling to Oak Park River Forest and what should be a fun one. That one set to get started in just about 40 minutes, 6.30 p.m. first tip there from Oak Park. Then we have uh, DRW Prep, which is another one of these Noble League schools playing at Clark. That's a 6.30 p.m tip as well. Sullivan traveling to Perspectives for a 6 p.m. tip off. That one's just about to get underway. And then a team from Indiana, Gary Lighthouse, coming all the way up to Farragut for a 7 p.m. tip off. And finally, ITW Spear traveling to Prosser. That is the third game tonight along with this one and the uh, pers uh, excuse me, and the Clark one that is between the Noble League and the Chicago Public Red Northwest. A quick look down the standings here, or in the lead after one week of play with a three and one record. Clark two and zero, oh, Young two and one, and Perspectives MSA and Westinghouse at three and two. Those are your top five teams here through the first week of play in IHSA. North Lawndale and Lane are both 500, one and one and two and two for those two squads. And then Farragut, Lincoln Park and Prosser round out the conference. Farragut and Prosser both uh, winless with two and four losses respectively. Lincoln Park got their first win last week. They are one and four. Five games already played by the Lions. They have had a busy start to the season here in IHSA play as both teams are going to head to their bench just a minute to go until we get started here with second half action from Lane Sack. Last year when these two teams played, Lane Sack was in control the whole time, ended with a 69 to 33 win over at Bulls College Prep on their home court. But tonight, a much different story, just a five point lead for the champions as we enter the second half. And we are excited to have you along with us. Should be a fun one. We'll see who made the halftime adjustments needed to stay alive and get their either second win or third win on the season, depending on which team comes out on top here. Looks like out of the halftime break is going to be the same five starters as started the uh, first half for Bulls College Prep. So that's going to be Dennis Naylor, Cameron Pointer, Jalen James, Tyshawn Oliver, and Aaron Watson. They elect to have uh, Curtis Owens still on the bench here to start off this uh, this third quarter for Lane Sack. We will see who their five are. It's going to be slightly different. It'll be Solibo, Jack Sora, Scanselbury, Lorenzo Aquino, and Parker Williams. So four of their five starters with Solibo replacing 
uh, Jackson Labcott here to start off quarter number three. It looks like it is going to be Lane Tech basketball. They switch. They'll be going from left to right this second half of play. Bulls will be going from left to right across your screen as Lorenzo Aquino gets the inbound to Scansbury. Did not see a lot of inbound passes to Dalton Scansbury, but gets it to start off this second uh, half of play. Aquino had one three there, gives it to Jack Zor, who also had three in the first half. Now Aquino looking to add to his total and does it with ease. If teams have not noticed, if you leave Lorenzo Aquino open, he is most likely going to make you pay for it. He is up to six points on the night and a carry called by Watson here. Lane with a little bit of momentum here out of the gates. They had that quick three from Aquino, and now they get possession back in their scoring half of the court underneath their scoring basket here. And they can quickly make this a double-digit lead for the first time, I think, all night. They score here, 35-27, the lead for Lane Tech. So Lebo fires for three and gets it to go. The tied for leading score in the first half now becomes the leading score for Lane Tech as Jack Zor gets called for the foul. Just ran into Pointer there as they try to bring it up the court. 38-27, Lane with an 11 point lead, their largest of the night. And Pointer will inbound things, try to get to Naylor. Looks like Lane Tech is going to run their man-to-man -man the full court as Aquino comes here to guard Watson. A nice job by Lane Sack. Watson was not originally supposed to be bringing the ball up the court. He had to run up to try to get the shot. An awkward shot there from Watson, rebounded by Oliver, who looks like he's on the ground. He's been, ended up on the ground a lot here tonight, but gets up quickly on the other side of things. Williams fakes out his defender, finishes with the two. And Lane Sack on a big run, a 5-0 run here to start off quarter number three. Trying to break that up is James, and he will for quick two. But Lane Sack still with the momentum up by 11 here. Apologies, an 8-0 run, not a 5-0 run to start off. Now an 8-2 run to start off this quarter number three for Lane Sack. Williams, right-hand side, trying to draw the charge is going to be Naylor, and he does it with ease. Nice defensive attempt there from the senior guard and we will move to Bulls College prep possession Lane Tech once again going with this full court press Watson throws it out of bounds again not sure who that was intended for kind of threw it between Naylor and Pointer there but either way it will be Lane Tech possession 623 now to go here in quarter number three as we Almost near six o'clock local time here in Roscoe Village. So Lebo pulls for three off the mark. We got started just a couple of minutes late. Bulls College Prep has a pretty long way up. Their arena and school is just by the United Center. Say, I remember a long bus ride last year, Lane Sack heading up there um, on a weekday afternoon, but they were able to get here pretty on time as another charge is going to get called against Lane Sack. That is their second of the half already just two minutes and four seconds in to the third quarter it's going to be the third foul called against Williams and with that Jackson Labcon will become the first sub of the half three fouls already this quarter for the champions head coach Nick Bogalbo kind of bartering with the referee there did not like that call trying to figure out how that was a charge Either way, it'll be Bulls prep basketball. Lane Tech continuing with this full court press, trying to force some airs. It worked last time, but this time, Bulls able to break it with ease, but then Pointer sends it right into the hands of Aquino. So, we might have talked a little too soon there. Aquino trying to put the pace. They get to Scantlebury. Drives up the middle and gets the easy two to go. He had a ball on the perimeter to start off the game. Decided to take the shot, missed it. Now instead decides to drive up the middle, and this time it works. Yantlebury's up to eight points, and a timeout is going to be called by Bulls. So that was likely going to be a turnover. They will keep possession. However, head coach Jacob Goldstein burns his second timeout of the game now, and they will just have three for the final quarter and a half plus here at Lane Gymnasium. Lead up to 13 for Lane Sack. It was a five-point game at the halftime break, so 
Lane definitely with some offensive momentum here to start off quarter number two. And also, I don't think, uh, other than two points, Bulls has scored yet. So they've kind of stepped up on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. And Lane's going to really need to be working hard at both those things as they head into a tougher part of their schedule. On Friday, they'll be playing at Credit Union One Arena for the Chicago Elite Classic against Taft. Not a conference game, but a big rivalry game for Lane Tech. And there'll be a big crowd over there at UIC's arena. So that will be a fun one. And hopefully Lane Tech able to pull off a win against the rival there. And then next week, conference play gets underway. They face off against Prosser on Wednesday. Perspectives IIT slash Joslin on Friday. And then on Saturday, they head to another one of the premier shootouts in the area, the D Rose shoot, uh, excuse me, the Team Rose shootout at Mount Carmel. That is a big game for Lane Tech, their first ranked opponent of the year in number 25, Lamont, who actually just entered the rankings, the Sun-Times rankings, as quick to the basket, Watson misses it. Salibo pulls down the rebound. Two Bulls players ended up on the ground. On the other side of things, Jackson Labcom pushes it. Aquino drives the baseline and gets the floater to go. Salibo was really aggressive in that rebound attempt there, just ripped it away from the other two uh, players fighting for it, and now Scantlebury will get the turnover. Aquino trying to push this 15-point lead for Lane Tech. Salibo thinks about the three. Aquino's on the ground, but he gets up okay. A lot of players falling here in this third quarter. Scantlebury with the excellent pass from Salibo finishes with the two. He's up to double digits, the first lane player in double digits here tonight. And Okino's gonna get called for the foul. That's the second time tonight a player's just kind of running into pointer as they bring it up the court and get called for a foul. That's the fourth foul called against Lane this half. The third called this game against Aquino. But still, a big lead for Lane Tech, 17 points. They led by just five at the half and an offensive foul called here against Oliver down low. And Lane will get possession back. It's gonna be a 15 to two run here. If I'm doing the math here quickly correct for the champions out of the gate here. Four and a half to play in quarter number three. Jack Soar brings it slowly across the court, hands it off to Labcon. He hit a three in the first half and hits one here in the second half as well. Labcon, nothing but net there from beyond the arc and pushes the lane sack lead once again. Nice pass underneath to James. Salibo flew out of nowhere there. He does not think he made any contact, but the referees say he does, and that will be his second foul of the half, and it will send Jalen James to the line for a pair of free throws. As I mentioned, he had an excellent first week of the season, 18 against Rauner and against two ranked opponents. He had 11 against Lake Forest, and uh, 14 against St. Ignatius for this young junior for Bulls College Prep. One of the young leaders on this team and head coach Jacob Goldstein just said a very impressive special young player as he will go one for two from the line, but they get the offensive rebound. Dower gets blocked by Scantlebury. If I'm counting correctly, that's his third full block of the night. And Lane will head back up the court, trying to get this two back to a 20-point lead as a foul is going to be called here on Oliver. And both teams kind of trading fouls here. Seven fouls already called here in the second half. That's five against Lane Sack and two against Bulls College Prep. This one is going to be a shooting foul, so Jack Zor will head to the line to shoot a pair of free throws. Trying to get the lead back up to 24 lane sec. And the first one is good. So Lane gets to that 50 point mark. Lane has yet to score less than 50 in a game, which is a good sign for this team. Even in their two losses, they were able to get above that 50 point mark. They scored 62 in their loss to Niles North. So scoring has not been that much of a problem this year for Lane Sack as a travel is going to be called against Dower. He was trying to work some magic under the basket there. Not sure when he was expecting to uh, either pass it or shoot the ball, but referee will call a travel before he has the chance. 
and Lane will get it back up by 21. This may allow, if this keeps up, Lane to get some of their bench some playing time, which be which be nice heading into this tougher part of the schedule where more than likely it'll be the starters and the early bench playing most of the game. Lapcom pulls for three again. This one looked like it made its way in and set this ricochet off the side of the rim there. Bulls College Prep gonna need some points and need some points fast here. They trail just by five at the half, but have been slow offensively. A lot of missed shots from their squad, a lot of blown opportunities offensively, and then Lane's offense has really got going as Scantlebury goes to the basket and scores. He is up to 12 points on the night. As another missed shot on the other end of things. The most we have seen in a game so far from Scantlebury was 15 against Jones. He's on pace to beat that if he stays in for the rest of the game. A long three from Labcon off the mark. And Bulls will have a, another chance to cut into this lead as heaving up the two and getting fouled will be Naylor. It's interesting. Naylor, a very integral part of this team. We saw him passing, facilitating the game well in that uh, first half, but he only has two points to show for it. As Rosencrantz is going to check into the game here for Labcon, it looks like, who's going to head off the court with the trainer. Looks like he's okay, but gonna get checked out really quickly and Rosencrantz will head on for him. So Rosencrantz, Aquino, Tsor, Scantlebury, and Salibo, your five on the court for Lane as first free throw missed there by Naylor. Lane has fouled six times, so the next time they foul this half will put the Bulls College prep team into bonus for the rest of the game. I'm sure if you're Lane Tech coaching staff, one of the main things you want to see out of your team is if they can be a little more disciplined in these last 10 minutes or so of the game as Scantlebury gets straight to the basket. He has been very aggressive here in the second half. We saw him pull down a big rebound a couple of minutes ago that kind of set off this Lane Tech run and then See there, just not showing any mercy to the defender. He's going straight to the basket, finishing with the two. He is up to 11 points on the night, second on the team behind Scantlebury as he pulls for three and nothing but net. Five quick points here from Shahid Salibo. And Lane now has broken out a 26 point lead. This one will go out of bounds on Bulls, and we're nearing running clock territory. I had originally thought it was 40 points. However, last week in the tournament, it was 30 points, so it may just be a 30-point running clock, in which case Lane Tech is just four points away from having a running clock in the fourth quarter here. Rosencrantz with some nice inbound defense, and they send it straight to Scantlebury. That's one of the big problems tonight for Bulls College Prep. They just have not had a lot of good inbounding, and they've sent balls to Lane Tech a lot as Rosencrantz gets his second basket of the night. Lane Tech gets the 60-point mark. Three ball on its way. This one missed. And they're going to call a late foul off the ball, it looks like, on Dower. It's going to be his first, the third of the half on Bulls College Prep. Either way, Lane Tech will get the ball back up by 28 there. Kind of a weird spin of events there for both the teams, but the champions will end up with possession. 145 to go in quarter number three. Aquino calls for a screen to his left, takes it up the middle, the floater can't get to go. Scantlebury with the rebound, doesn't get fouled there. And now Rosencrantz will drive to Scantlebury, second try, easy there for the big man. And he puts Lane Tech up by that elusive 30 point mark, 62 to 32, under 90 seconds to play. So we'll see two sophomores check into the game soon for Lane Tech, nice Ball down low, they send it out, three on its way. Jaden Pointer, he misses. Bulls College Prep playing some of their uh, bench players on the court right now as the three drained there by Pointer. On the other side of things, Rosencrantz fires for three, misses it, rebounded by Owens. It's interesting, they didn't have Owens in for the start of this quarter, and he hits a three. What I, what I was saying, he was just such a big part of that 
um, first half for Bulls. It was interesting, they took out one of their leading scores as the lead slowly slipped away. This looks like Lane's gonna hold for one final shot here and the Kenny Rosario and Drew Bartoli likely will have to wait until the fourth quarter to check in. Owens with some tight defense. They hand it off to Salibo and they switch Owens onto him. So some big defensive task. However, he fouls from behind and Lane Sack will keep possession and that will allow Bartoli and Rosario to check into the game. Bartoli played for a little bit, had a basket in the first half, but this will be the first appearance in the matchup for Rosario. So they're gonna put Salibo on inbounding duties. I thought that looked weird, it was, and they will send Rosencrantz instead. I don't know if we've ever seen Salibo, at least not this year, uh, inbound the basketball since he's such a big part of this team scoring-wise. We'll see if Lane Sack can draw up a play for a final shot here. 23.7 seconds left in this quarter. Having a quick word with the head coach of Bulls College Prep, Jacob Goldstein. Not sure what this is about. And I think they're talking about doing a running clock for the fourth quarter. I'm not sure why. Possibly, I don't know, both the coaches look like they are not super happy with that. But for some reason, the referees say, if we are reading lips right, that it will be a rolling clock in quarter number four. As Olibo gets it to Scanselbury, and now Rosencrantz will get the ball. 10 seconds on the clock as Bartola dribbles into some trouble but gets it out to Salibo, who I imagine they might hold for the final shot. He pulls up for three, misses it. The rebound by Scanselbury who gets an and one buzzer beater. That one dropped in just as the buzzer sounded. He will have the chance to make it a three point play. And Dalton Scanselbury, a new career high for Lane Tech. 16 points on the night. He gets above that 15 point mark. He hit against Jones and trying to get to 17 on the free throw attempt. He will not, but still has that nice play to end the third quarter and a 26 point lead for the champions here over Bulls College Prep. Trevor Goodhart will check into the game alongside Dylan Pepper. So it looks like the five who will be on the court will be Pepper, Goodhart, Bartoli, Rosario, and Rosencrantz. So four sophomores plus Goodhart, who's a first year junior varsity player. So a very young five are going to take the court here for the champions. For Bulls, it looks like their five will be Jaden Pointer, Curtis Owens, Cameron Pointer, uh, Aaron Watson, and one player who I cannot recognize here from our vantage point, but a mix of players who have seen some minutes and some players who have not here for the Bulls. Oh, that's going to be number 11, Tyshawn Oliver. So they keep the 6-7 forward in here for quarter number four. We will see if it is a running clock or not. If our lip reading was correct here, or it might just have been them saying at 30-point mark they're going to go to the running clock. Not sure yet, but we will see as they're going to have... Both the teams take the court. Eight minutes on the clock for Lane Tech to try to run out this victory and get the three and two on the season. It's a little concerning there for Lane. They only trailed by, they only led by five after the first half of play, but they held this Bulls College prep team to just, I want to say, 11 points in the third quarter while greatly expanding on their lead. They go up to 64 points as three ball off the mark there and a foul is going to be called by Bartoli. It looks like they are going to keep the clock running here. But um, as we were saying, just a big offensive output there for Lane Sack in the third quarter to break this one open. Still seeing a couple of players dressed who have not made their first appearance here yet tonight, so we'll see if we get that here. That is going to be the seventh foul against Lane Tech, so that will send the Bulls into bonus as Cameron Pointer will get ready for his first shot of a one and one, makes it, and will get the second one. So it is interesting. They are going to run the clock despite the lead being over 20, not 30, which is the usual benchmark we have seen. The second free throw is good as well. So two quick points here 
from the Bulls to start off the fourth quarter. Pepper gets it to break the press, going all by himself, but dribbles it off his knee. Saw an opening in front of him, thought he could find a layup there, but he was being guarded by a herd of Bulls there. About three or four of the players chasing him down and ends up dribbling off his knee. So instead it will be Bulls College Prep basketball. They've kept Owens into the game. The senior, as you mentioned, making his first appearance of the year, trying to make the most of his minutes here tonight. And he actually gets fouled, so he will head to the line to look to add to his current 13 points to lead the team. I'm guessing we're not going to see Salibo or uh, Scantlebury again tonight, so it looks like those two will likely end as the leading scorers. 16 for Scantlebury, 15 for Salibo. Another impressive uh, point totals from those two dynamic duo. The junior and senior have been showing off here in a couple of games this season. They combined for 31 here tonight as Goodhart takes down the rebound and will give it to Pepper. Some loose defense here from Oliver will allow Pepper to just dribble there for a second. Now in the corner of our Toli with it. Under six to play. Nice spin move and just can't finish with the layup. It's interesting, Bartoli somehow, sometimes has a preference for the right side of the basket, sometimes has a preference for the left as a charge is going to be, excuse me, a, yeah, a charge is going to be taken there by Goodhart. Lane's had a couple of charges called against them on the offensive side of things, so the bench happy to see them finally get a charge taken there on defense by their squad. Bartoli inbounds it to... Pepper, who gets it back to Bartoli here. We haven't seen Bartoli be on ball handling duties much this season, but kind of has the build of a guard. And a technical foul, it looks like, maybe called. Rosario was arguing on the other side of the court with Jaden Pointer. And I think it might have been a Foul called against Lane and then maybe a technical call. We're still going to see who takes the free throws here. It was a off the ball foul by one of these teams. Originally looked against Lane Tech. That's what the announcer said, at least, against Rosario. And now they're going to give it to the Bulls, even though they have possession. So not a usual bonus shot for Bulls. Either way, we'll put both teams in bonus. So now seven fouls for Bulls College Prep, as we'll see Giuliano DiFranco and Tommy Stone check in momentarily. Goodhart down the court, can't grab the uh, heave, and Bulls College Prep will get it back. So a slower offensive quarter here for Lane Sack with them putting their uh, bench in, but Either way, still a comfortable lead, 25 points for the champions. They're going to send Tommy Stone and Giuliano DiFranco into the game. DiFranco was not here with the team last week, so this is actually going to be his season debut. Second year varsity player, one of the taller players on the team, listed at 6'5". Plays in kind of the 4 slash 5 role for this Lane Tech team, and could be a big part for this squad. He's interesting, he plays in that big, taller role, but also has a really impressive outside shot. As uh, first shot missed here by Watson. A lot of free throws being attempted here in this uh, fourth quarter after I think there was just three or four combined free throws between the two teams in the first half. I was looking at the scorebook and there was not a lot of filled in or empty circles to represent free throws. Bartoli with the one-footed fadeaway shot somehow banks it in and will extend the lead here once again on the other side of things. Missed shot there from Bowles and a foul is going to be called as they head in as both players head to the ground and we will see two more players make their season debuts. Caden Buford comes to the court and Omar Bushalunfa Bushalunfa was out for last week with an injury, and he comes in now. So it'll be DeFranco, Bushalunfa, Rosario, Stone, and Buford for this last two plus minutes of play here. It has been a running clock, if you're wondering why it's been going so quickly. Watson with a step back, and he lost the ball while going into the air, but I think they called a foul on Rosario, so he must have had some 
contact on that shot. He is going to uh, head to the line and looks like Bulls are going to clear their bench. They're gonna send five players on after this shot. So it looks like Curtis Owens is going to end as the leading scorer for Bulls as first free throw good by Watson. We're gonna see appearances here from Terion Scott, Demandre Wallace, Sam Garcia, uh, Jaden Pointer, and in one second we will see Kashan Tenard also check in to the game as second free throw miss under 90 seconds to go. Head coach Jacob Goldstein had good things to say about uh, Sam Garcia, who we just said checked in. He's been kind of playing as a backup point guard, didn't get many minutes here tonight, but has a bright future with this squad as Abush Lumpha drives left-hand side, pushes it out to Rosario. However, Watson with some good defense there. And tip in, miss, and trying to come down with the foul with the ball is DeFranco. Instead, a jump ball is called and a technical foul called against one of these squads. I think called against Pointer there. So emotions kind of picking up here. That is going to stop the clock for some reason. I'm not sure why. Of all the reasons they decide to stop it in the last minute of play. However, it is going to be free, three, free, free throws here for Caden Buford is looking to score his first points as a member of this Lane Sack varsity squad. And he will miss the first shot, but has one more shot at it. Buford, another one of the players making his debut tonight. We saw him and Abushalamva both take the court for the first time in a regular season game. And now there's just two more players left on this Lane Sack roster who have not played. That's going to be Aris Mussolini and uh, Jack Davis. Both of them still out there on the bench in street clothes. They've not dressed for a game yet this season. But 15 of 17 having playing time through the first five games. Not horrible numbers here for Lane Sack as Buford gets it to Rosario. Clock starts ticking again. 50 seconds to go in this one. Tommy Stone trying to drive, pushes it out to Abush Lumpha. He drives left-hand side, puts up the shot, and gets it to go for his first points of this 2022-2023 season. Three on its way, this one off the mark, rebounded by Buford, 30 seconds to go, and this should do it if Lane Sack holds for one final shot. After a struggling first half, Lane only went up by five, 32 to 27, but they outscore Bulls here 36 to 13 in the third and fourth quarter combined, and they are going to escape here with an above 500 record for the first time this year as the buzzer rings, and Lane Sack takes a 68 to 40 win. They move to three and two, and are ready for a big matchup on Friday night against Taft at Credit Union One Arena. 16 points tonight from Dalton Scantlebury to lead all scores. 15 from Shahid Salivo, who we should mention, did that playing in just two quarters, the second and the third. Did not play the first, did not play the fourth, but still 15 from Salibo. And obviously a very impressive performance from Scantlebury. For the Bulls, Curtis Owens, 13 points in his first appearance of the game, but not enough to lead his team to victory as Bulls will drop to one and... Uh, one and four on this season. They'll look to get back on track as they start conference play tomorrow, but that's just about going to do our coverage here tonight on this Wednesday night. We will talk to you from Credit Union One Arena on Friday night, 6 p.m. tip-off against the Taft Eagles. But your final score for now, Lane Tech champion 68, Bulls College Prep Bulls 40. My name's Alex Burstein. Good night.